Today we come to First Timothy chapter 1 and we come to verses 8 to 17. And here we come to uh, the great picture of uh, the Apostle Paul. We have his personal uh, testimony uh, and of course the things that he's thankful to God for uh, when we look at these verses. So let's just pray before we look uh, at the scriptures. Our Father, we thank you for this time together. We can turn to the Word of God. We do thank you for the Lord Jesus. And Father, we're thankful for saving us and for keeping us and for giving us the strength to serve you again. And Father, another day, Father, we return thanks. And so, Father, as we turn to the Word of God, we ask, Lord, that you would speak to us through your Word. And pray that as the truths of Scripture are uh, explained and as the Spirit of God speaks to us, we pray that you would help us to be obedient uh, in our wills, in our minds, in our lives. So, Lord, we just acknowledge how much we need your help as we read the scriptures and give thanks in the Saviour's name. Amen. We're going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and we're going to read from verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for righteous, but for the lawless and disobedient for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, if there be anything that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, or the gospel of the glory of God, uh, which was committed to my trust. I thank to Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, that he can be faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy, because of it in ignorantly, ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pound to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. And we know that God will bless the reading of his word. Now in these verses in First Timothy chapter one, Apostle Paul uh, gives a piece of spiritual biography, if you like, of his own life. Uh, and it seems that in these verses he starts First Timothy uh, after reading the law and explaining the purpose of the law. Uh, he speaks about his own life uh, and gives his personal testimony. Uh, and really what he said in these verses is that he was deep, deeply grateful uh, for ever coming to faith in Christ. Uh, whenever Paul thought of what the Lord had done for him, uh, he had an amazing sense of gratitude and deep thanksgiving. Uh, and the trouble is today, even as believers, that we have lost the wonder uh, of all that the Lord has done for us. You remember in the book of Sir Samuel, uh, Samuel in chapter 12, uh, after uh, they declared that they want the king, uh, he says this, more, uh, 1 Samuel 12, verse 23, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and right way, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. And here's the phrase I want to pick out. For consider how great things or how great he hath done for you. And if that was true of the Israelites in 1 Samuel 12, it was definitely true of us as believers uh, today. So the first thing we're going to look at is that uh, Paul says, although uh, the Lord Jesus Christ had saved him, he was once a wretched sinner. And so as a verse 13, we got this vivid description of Paul's past life before he became a Christian. And here he tells us of three outstanding ways which he sinned against the Lord before God saved him. The first was, uh, as he says in verse 13, he was a blasphemer. It's a very, very strong word. Uh, it means that he was a profane person. He simply delighted in ridiculing the name of Christ. And sadly, there are people today who gladly ridicule the name of Christ. Then we see he was a persecutor. Uh, he not only blasphemed the name of Christ, but he rounded up those who followed Christ and persecuted them mercilessly. Uh, Acts chapter 9, uh, Saul breathing out 
uh, threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Galatians 1 verse 13, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Uh, and so what Saul did not know at the time was that in persecuting uh, the believers, he actually persecuted Christ. And of course, that's why when the voice was heard from heaven, Acts chapter 9 verse 4, Saul, Saul, well persecuted, tell me. And then the third thing we see was violent. And that's this word uh, injurious, uh, which is used in verse <clears throat> 13. Uh, he was the ringleader among the enemies of Christ and actually damaged the cause of Christ. And so this was the man who was saved by the Lord, a man who described himself in verse 15 as the chief of sinners. The thing that filled Paul with deep thanksgiving was that in spite of his wickedness, the Lord had mercy on him and saved him, as he says, uh, in verse 13. And does this not same glorious truth fill our hearts with gratitude? And if we think we're less sinful than Paul, we should now look up Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Uh, who can know it? How wonderful that the Saviour should save us in spite of our sin, and we can thank God for it, at least we should. The second thing is, uh, Paul says, I thank the Lord that he saved me completely without my own efforts and trying. How was Paul saved? How, what made him a Christian? How did he become a converted man? Was he turning over a new leaf or resolving to be better? Uh, I think the obvious answer is no from the Bible. Uh, but verse 13 uh, tells us that he was shown mercy. Uh, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Uh, the word uh, mercy, obtain mercy here is in the passive and quite literally means I was mercied, M-E-R-C-I-E-D. Uh, the mercy given was not bestowed in any response to any act of his own. Uh, he was totally undeserving and unworthy, but God had mercy upon him. The same truth actually is mentioned in verse 14. And uh, the grace of our Lord is exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, let's remember the same is true of every Christian. Titus chapter 3, uh, a few books on. Titus <coughs> chapter 3 and verse 4. We ourselves, reading from verse 3, we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Saviour toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. And we can think of Ephesians chapter 2, where God is described as rich in mercy. And so how grateful we should be that becoming a Christian is not by works, uh, nor by human merit, nor by prayers, nor by pilgrimages. We are actually saved by Christ himself, uh, quite apart from any effort or merit that we might have. And so it's all, salvation is completely based upon the finished work of Christ. Then not only had God uh, saved uh, Paul, the wretched sinner, not only he saved him without uh, efforts or good works uh, on Paul's behalf, but he had entrusted uh, Paul with the preaching of the gospel. And I read this in verses 11 uh, and 12. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, uh, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, so that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And so the gospel was entrusted to the Apostle Paul, not just the Apostle Paul. Uh, not only had God the Lord forgiven and saved Paul, but actually <clears throat> made him his servant, his representative, his ambassador, uh, and of course the personal application of this truth uh, is that the same Lord has put us in trust with the gospel. Uh, we have been trusted by Christ with the holy task of making him known to others. And uh, so the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we discharging our responsibility? Are we seeking to make Christ known? Uh, think about it. He represents us in heaven, but we are to represent him down here on earth. Uh, and so it reminds us that in our lives, we must be, in the words of First Peter chapter uh, three, <clears throat> be ready always to give an answer to every man that ask of you a reasonable hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 
<coughs> then is not only th is Paul thankful for entrusted with the preaching of the gospel, but that God enables him, strengthens him, and sustains him for the very task. Uh, we get this impression in verse 12. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry or service. Uh, the word uh, enabled him means to have strengthened him. Uh, this truth is called illustrated throughout the Bible. Moses, uh, God called Moses to a task, but he promised to be with him and strengthen him, and enable him, say that the I am is with you. He called Joshua to work for him, but of course he promised Joshua that he'll be with him and empower him. Joshua chapter 1, be strong and have a good courage. The same was true of Gideon, uh, I am with thee, uh, and also Acts chapter 1 where he calls upon the disciples and asks to be his witnesses uh, after the Holy Spirit had come on the day of Pentecost. And so the Apostle Paul thanked God he was equal for uh, any and uh, every task uh, only because of the enabling power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, my grace is sufficient uh, for thee. And so what was true for Paul is true for us uh, as to our praying, our teaching, our preaching, our visiting, our testifying, our daily living. Uh, this can only come as we are empowered by the indwelling Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 26 verse 22, uh, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. This was Paul giving one of his testimonies in the book of the Acts. And then the final thing that Paul was thankful for was that through the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he can do for them what he had done for the Apostle Paul. Verse 16, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Uh, how does Christ's salvation save us? Uh, and we answer, look at Paul and see for yourself. The word example or pattern in verse 16 has the idea of an artist's outline sketch, an example of what's to follow. And it's just like that uh, with the Apostle Paul. When we look at him, we see what God can do with a man when he saves him by his grace. Uh, C.H. Spurgeon said the idea that Paul's conversion was exceptional is flatly contradicted here. Paul's conversion was not exceptional. He was only the first of many similar conversions. What God did for Paul, he can do for you. Uh, so do not despair and above all recapture and keep fresh the wonder of God saving grace in our lives. And so as we come to the conclusion of this, we can see uh, the tremendous uh, personal aspect uh, that Paul brings at the start of this first letter to Timothy. Let's just pray. Father, again, we thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, the fact that you saved Paul, and in saving Paul, you have produced a pattern uh, for all that will afterwards believe. Thank you, Lord, that you not only saved Paul, but you entrusted him with the gospel. You enabled him, you gave him the strength to serve you, and for the task that he had of uh, preaching the gospel and of teaching the word of God. And we know, Lord, that whilst uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, the way he was saved was unique, uh, yet, Father, we know there are many principles which are the same. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us and saved every believer in Christ. Thank you that you've given us the same indwelling Holy Spirit, uh, which will empower us to live our daily lives and to live effective lives uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, you've been trusted with the gospel. We just pray, Lord, you would help us uh, to be sharing the gospel each day. So Father, give thanks now in the Saviour's name. Amen.